welcome back welcome to segment uh, 2.2 and in this segment we will be discussing about accounting concepts in the previous segment we have uh, discussed about various accounting principles followed by different countries and we said uh, each country has its own set of rules based on which accounting uh, uh, statements the financial statements are prepared but in respect of uh, which country you are in the subject of accounting itself has some basic principles which are common across all countries and all jurisdictions uh, there are a variety of these basic principles what we'll do is we'll discuss five accounting concepts which will be relevant to our discussion of balance sheet analysis right and these are the five concepts we'll discuss the money measurement concept actually we have discussed this already we'll repeat it here the business entity concept conservatism and the two most important concepts for a discussion dual asset concept and matching principle we'll also discuss one more concept accrual system of accounting and uh, these three put together right these three put together forms the bedrock of our future discussions uh, please remember that there are other accounting concepts as well such as uh, the accounting period concept the cost concept many other concepts which we are not going into which are not relevant for a uh, discussion right so we'll start with the money measurement concept which we have discussed already uh, we're going to just revisit it so we spoke of transactions are to be entered into the books of account but not every transaction not every event gets into the books of account only those transactions that can be measured that can be measured in terms of money gets into the books of accounts right uh, things like uh, salaries uh, things like purchases you know this is the sort of stuff which we can measure in money terms and that's why we can enter them into the books of accounts we already discussed the the case where uh a trans uh, even cannot be measured in terms of uh, money we discussed earlier the example of ceo quitting the job and it is part of how successful that ceo is and how big an impact how big an adverse impact the the departure of the ceo will be having on the company we will not be uh entering it into the books of account because we can't quantify it right so only those transactions that can be measured in terms of money gets in the books of account the rest no matter how significant if they cannot be quantified do not enter the books of account that is what the money measurement concept says right uh, the other concept with, that we need to uh, uh, be clear on is the business entity concept uh, this is a very important concept uh, let me tell you what it is so put simply the business entity concept says that the business is different from the owner right uh, take take for example a proprietorship concern where you are the proprietor so you are running your own business you have your own staff you know, and one of the staff is an accountant right there is an accountant here and he'll be maintaining a list of all income and all expenses and everything the the firm your firm will be receiving in form of sales or any other income he'll be jotting down all the income and all the related expenses will be jotting down so one fine day you go go to the accountant and asks say i want 10000 rupees now the accountant will not be having any problem giving giving it to you because it is after all your money this is your firm and it is your money but the question is should the should the 10000 which you taken be entered so should it be accounted should the accountant enter uh, transactions related to the owner into the books of accounts right so in other words uh, we are asking that is the owner and the the business one and the same or should we distinguish between the owner and the business and the business entity concept says that we have to distinguish between owner and the business so from the point of view of the business right from the point of view of the business the owner is just an outside party there are many also party with uh, which a business uh, deals with uh, customers you know, suppliers there are many also parties and the owner is just one another also party which the company deals with right he is not any any different in any ways different from the other uh, also parties and that is what business entity concept says we give we give a special identity to the company uh, the company is supreme the company is totally isolated it's different from others and the proprietor stays out of it right uh this this might uh, seems to be very different to very confusing concept the why should the owner be kept out of the business when he himself is the uh, owner you see we speak of owner creditors your banks all outside parties and we club the owner along with the outside parties not giving him any special status uh, the reason why we do this is when you prepare the books of accounts we are to we are to uh, indicate the actual position of the firm and because there will be some transactions between the uh, owner and the business in the form of personal drawings like the example which you discussed a drawing 10000 or or he himself will be investing some amount 
so there will be money coming in from the coming into the business from the owner and there will be money going out from business in the form of drawings so you need to account for those personal transactions also and instead of uh, uh, clubbing them along with the company uh, maintain a separate account and what we call it as capital so capital account there is something called a capital account so once we have a, a capital account all transactions related to the owner gets into the capital account whatever is a, whether it's a investment uh, in the form of plus or a negative uh, transactions like withdrawals so we maintain a special account called the capital account and uh, just as the other parties see the company borrows uh, loans from banks so bank is a outside party right so bank is an outside party so bank is one of the outside parties where a, a company borrow very business borrows funds so we'll also say the owner is another outside party from which the business has borrowed funds actually when you when the company starts you know starts its business it needs funds and the first person to invest money into the business will be the owner right uh, banks don't uh, come in and finance the company without without the owner putting in uh, even a single rupee that doesn't happen so the first investment in fact comes from the owner and there will be investment uh when running into lakhs and crores sometimes uh, from the owner that will be the first investment of any party uh, into the business so so what we say is the business has taken funds it's taken loan from a entity called owner and he is just like an outside party just like the business will take uh, uh, loans from bank uh, loans from creditors you know the the business is taking funds from the proprietor we give that funds uh, fund a special name called capital see that is what the business entity concept says so from from here on we you need to understand that the owner and the business are two separate entities and should not be treated as one that is what the business entity concept says right the the other uh, business concept that we'll be discussing is the conservatism uh, take a look at this example uh, here we have a, a small budget for a family where uh, the housewife has drawn the expenses to be 12000 so for this month uh, uh, the monthly expenses are projected to be 12000 this, this includes house rent and school fees for kids and some loan installment other expenses right so so it'll be 12000 but if you look at the income sources okay 8000 is a uh, salary which which you'll be getting anyway but there is the housewife is expecting 2000 payment from a borrower who's a neighbor who has taken loan to us back and this borrower has has not uh, repaid for the past two years and now she's expecting uh, him to pay and even worse she's expecting 5000 to be uh, to be received from lottery ticket winnings now these two are unlikely now this anyway is highly unlikely the second one but even the first one is highly unlikely and now now it will be very it will be very foolish to to be saying that she'll be meeting 12000 uh, expenses out of 15000 uh, income projected now out of this 15000 we can safely say this 5000 will be coming so there will be only 10000 and even though 2000 is doubtful we don't know it it might come it might not come but let us say it's not going to come so so actually the income sources will be only 8000 whereas the expenses are 12000 so if you present a rosy picture you know if you, you project, project a positive picture that everything is going to be fine uh, you're going to receive so and so amount from so and so source which is unlikely you know uh, you'll be in trouble the same is the case with business the 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 principle of conservatism says you know whenever you uh, are dealing with income right whenever you're dealing with income don't anticipate income which which is not certain you know when there is no certainty in the income you do not rely on them in fact you do not uh, enter in the books of accounts so when it is doubtful you know similarly when when when, exp- when an expense is highly likely uh, don't don't uh, sub- don't subside it you know don't hide it you know anticipate that expense and this forms uh, a core uh, concept for many of the terms which we we'll discuss in the future say for example a company uh, is making a turnover of uh, 10 crores every year it is setting goods worth 10 crores and this company has been running for the past uh, 20 years it's, it's a long standing company and it has been the experience of the company that out of the 10 crores sales it makes roughly 5% of the people don't pay you know just as in banks you have bad debts you know you have defaulters some are willful defaulters 
NPS are just the nature of the business. You know, it, it's a risk that banks take. They'll be borrowers who won't pay. So, so similarly, this company ha had a history based on past experience that five percent of the the borrowers don't pay. So it's only receiving ninety five percent of the sales. Ninety five percent of ten ten crores. So say we are in year two thousand fourteen, two thousand thirteen fourteen, and this year the company has made a, uh, a sales of uh, ten crores again. Now the the principle of conservatism says because we don't know how much how many of the the customers will not pay, right? Uh, assume that all of the ten crores is on credit sales, and we are yet to receive the amount of ten crores. All all of this is credit sales, so we don't know how many are going to pay. But based on the past experience, we know it's not going to be ten crores because we had a history where five percent of the customers are not paying. So the principle of conservatism says this: uh, expect only. Nine point five crores. Expect only nine point five crores. That doesn't mean we are going to enter under the sales head nine point five crores. We are still going to enter ten crores, but but under the expense we will have a provision. We will have a we will create a provision called provision for doubtful debts. And in the provision for doubtful for doubtful debt, will enter point five. So we are creating an expense, a new expense, which is which is anticipated. You know, you are thinking it might come. So if it doesn't happen, if you, if you recover the ten crores, it is is well and fine. The point five will be reversed reversed in the next year accounts. That will be a, a non-operating income for the next year. Fine. But what the principle of conservative says is, don't don't uh, boost up profit. Don't boost up profit by by expecting income which you don't will which will not be receiving or or hiding expenses which which you know you're going to incur. So be conservative. That's that's what uh, uh, the principle says. You know, if you refer the the dictionary. For the word conservative, you will get a fair idea what what it actually means. Now, when we are saying conservative, we are not being aggressive in our projections. We are being very realistic, both on the income side and the expense side. So you need to be conservative on the income side in the sense that don't account for income which you know is not going to come or which is not not likely. Similarly, on the expenses side, anticipate expenses which you know uh, are likely to occur, even even though you are hundred percent convinced they might occur. But if there is a good chance. If that is going to occur, then you have to uh, record them. Let's take this example. Uh, for a company, there is a pending court dispute, and it's very likely that the company is going to lose this case, and it has to pay twenty-five thousand. So, how how are you going to enter this into the books of account? So, the company is reasonably certain that it is going to lose the case. In which case, it has to create a provision. So, when you are certain, if it is likely to happen, we create a provision books of account. So, the profit gets reduced to that extent. Now this is an anticipation that it it is going to happen. If it doesn't happen, we are going to reverse the entry in the next year. If it happens, we we already factored this into the account, so profit won't change. So what if uh, the chances are equal? I mean, we are saying here that uh, the company is likely to lose the lose the case. Say the eighty percent chance the company is going to lose the case. But what if the company is not sure? I mean, there's a fifty fifty percent chance of uh, winning or losing, or let's say there's only a thirty percent chance. I mean, what, what are you going to do? You're not you're not sure whether it's going to happen or not. So in such cases, we treat them as a contingent liability, right? In in such cases, when you're not sure whether the event will happen or not, so in such cases, you create a contingent liability, and this will not be recorded in the books of account. This will be mentioned separately in the notes to account, right? This will be discussing in the in the later chapter. Uh, but the point I want you to uh, uh, understand at this stage is uh, the principle of conservatism says. Not to unnecessarily boost profit, right? Don't don't uh, boost profit, and you can boost profit in two ways: one by uh, increasing income or reducing expenses. So you can increase the income by saying, "See, I will receive so and so uh, 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 sales." You know, you can also say uh, a non-operating income, an extraordinary one-time income. You can say, "This year I'm going to." Uh, Uh, make a special income. I'm going to sell the land for for so much profit. You know, you can you can say say, say a lot of stuff. If you're not certain it's going to happen, don't record in the books, right? Similarly, on the expense side, if you are certain, if you are reasonably certain that you are going to incur a certain expense, go ahead and record it. I don't unnecessarily boost profit. Be conservative, right? Be conservative in uh, reporting the figures, and that's what the principle of accounting, the principle of conservatism, right? Uh, with that, we'll come to we have come to the end of the segment. In the next segment, I will be discussing a, a very important uh, accounting concept, that is the dual aspect, okay, the dual aspect of accounting, which is the the basis for the double entry bookkeeping system. Let me meet you, meet you there.